In this video we're going to demonstrate how to do ultrasound guided access of the jugular vein, measure for a tunnel dialysis catheter, and place the tunnel dialysis catheter. Uh, you can see this patient had a previous catheter. We're going to try and route the catheter, the new catheter, on the outside of that uh, puncture site. First thing to do is we always use ultrasound, um, and the ultrasound shows the sternocleidomastoid superficially, deep to the jugular vein, and deep to that, and lying a little more laterally is the carotid artery. We always try to use an access trajectory. And you can see a branch coming into the jugular there. And we always try to use an access trajectory that if we go through and through the jugular vein, we won't actually end up puncturing the carotid artery. I'll often take a hemostat and take the hemostat up and um, just blot the point where I'm going to puncture it. And, that's from kinda, and then it gives me an idea of exactly where on the skin uh, to access the jugular vein. So the jugular vein is centered right in the middle, so you can really tee off the middle of the transducer. That's a nice view. And what we're going to do now is basically, well, you'll see what we're going to do is take the um, hemostat, check the position, below it. So that's right where I need to do the access. Then we'll take a micropuncture needle. I'm going to go straight through that point that I just belotted. And there's not a lot of damage that you're going to do with a micropuncture needle. Ideally, you see it go right in and compress the anterior wall and then puncture. Um, here, I've not done the greatest job because you really like to see the needle as it enters the jugular vein. Mm. Um, but venous return is the surefire thing that you want to see. We've got venous return here. Next, we're going to take the um, micropuncture wire. The micropuncture wire should pass easily. There should be no resistance. If the patient is awake, it should not hurt. As long as your endoluminal doesn't hurt, if it hurts, uh, then you're in a sub queue somewhere. So we're going to take the needle out, and the next step is to bring in the fluoroscopy. So you're going to bring in the fluoroscopy, and you're going to fluoro that and make sure um, that it follows the trajectory that you expect it to be. We typically want to place these about three centimeters beyond the cave or atrial junction so just checking the entire path here now what we're doing is putting hemostat on the skin uh, gives you some idea of where it should be this is probably a little bit more deep uh, into the atrium than you would want but this is now a skin marker that you can measure up to the access point so you can get a pretty good idea of what the length is that you're going to actually utilize we'll go over that in a little more detail so again here's how we kind of start you can see the previous access point um, the wire, we're going to skip forward, we've already got the wire access in, there's that hemostat we're looking at, and now we're basically, we just measure with a ruler, you know, from the access point all the way down to that, gives you an idea of um, the, the length of cath we're going to utilize, we can also measure from there on down to the counter incision if you want to be real accurate, uh, and typically I think it was a 21 centimeter um, catheter that we actually used in this situation. Okay, so that's the dilator for the mic micropuncture wire. Mm -hmm. It's going to go in again. It's important um, to dilate both the access point and the counter incision. One of the more common mistakes is you, you, they're, they're too tight. So here we're opening this up using an 11 blade, and then we'll take a hemostat and spread spread on that. Now we've replaced, of course, with an 035 Benson wire at this point. Actually, it's the wire. Uh, that, that comes with the sheath. And you can use an 035 Benson wire. If there are difficult angles, you can also exchange these out and use super stiff wires. <coughs> so the next step is going to be to make that counter incision. The counter incision has been made with an 11 blade. Now we're going to take the um, stilet, which has been uh, we push the catheter onto the end of the stilet and use it a protector to, so we can pull it through the tunnel. You see the catheter has been pushed onto the stilet. That little sliding uh, plastic protector protects it. Again, we haven't made the, the skin incision big enough, so we're going to have to come back and uh, dilate that a little bit. Won't go through. This is the hardest part of the whole procedure, is getting this, because it's not easy to direct these stilettes because they're kind of slimy. And you're going to see that um, it won't go through. We're going to have to back it out a little bit and make that incision on um, the access point just a little bit bigger. Too tight, can't pull it through, back it up. Either use the 11 blade or go ahead and stretch it up. And then it's going to come on through. Now when you pull it on through, I always pull that cuff up to almost up to the and the, the counter incision, the access point where the wires come out. You can always pull these catheters back. You can't advance them very easily. Now we've taken that protector off and the stilet off the catheter's just kind of sitting there. So 
So now what we've done is you serially laid up that track. Um, and finally, of course, we put in that uh, sheath, to this, this, uh, sheath which you can split. Um, catheter has been pushed down through the sheath. You then break it. And you'll see uh, there's a two-man technique or there's a one-handed, two-handed technique. And, uh, and you can see that what's been done here is you use one finger to push the catheter in. Then you can split the, um, so use that apex finger to push the catheter in place and then use your hands to pull, split away the sheath. And that's where most of the kinks occur, right in that point. So back up a little bit, you can see the neck, the wire has been inserted, it's an 035 wire has been inserted. Dilating it up. Now you can see the stilet has been advanced. Routing it around the old exit point. You can see the protector on the end of the catheter. The catheter is pushed onto the end of the stilet. We're having trouble getting it to come out through the access point. So we end up backing it out, making that entrance point just a little bit bigger. Now we've got it out, but it won't come through. Rookie mistake. Back it up, dilate up the skin access point just a little bit. Now we're going to pull it on through. <coughs> and you're going to take the stilet off. That's what's going on there. Stilet and the protector is off. So right now we've got an 035 wire going down. Looks like the inferior vena cava. Um, and we're going to serially dilate. This comes as part of the kit. We're going to serially dilate the track into the internal jug of the vein. And one of the things we always like to do is we do this is watch that dilator coming in. So we're watching the dilator. Unfortunately, we're also watching our hands. So you dilate it once. Right now we're changing out the dilator, taking in the next size dilator. And we're ready to go live in the fluoro again. Let's run this forward a little bit. Again, coming in again. You can see it. Now again, if you're putting this in from the left side, this is absolutely critical um, that you don't jam this right through the right side of the superior vena cava. Okay, so now we've done it. We're, we're going to switch back. And now we're ready to put the... Um, in fact, I think I just missed it. So what we're going to do now is put the sheath in. In fact, I think that is the sheath that we just put in. There's the sheath basically it's in it. We take the troll card out the middle of the sheath. It doesn't bleed. That's the nice thing about the new ones. They've got a cuff in them. And the catheter advances fairly easily down that. And then as we've kind of already shown, you can um, you keep index finger on the tip of the catheter and you split the two wings um, of the sheath away from that. Again, index finger holding the catheter in place, splitting the sheath with forward pressure on the catheter. As you can see, that tries to back up. Um, and then you always fluoro the entire tract. So we're going to look at it in too far. We're going to pull it back. <coughs> it back into nice position again that's because we've put the cuff all the way up and then 
typically as I'm pulling these back I will hold it at the uh, access point put a finger on it there and pull back you just don't want to pull that cuff all the way out through the skin because again it's just hard to get it back that's the critical part right here always got a fluid of this and make sure that there's a nice curve this is the most common reason that these things fail is really because of um, a kink that occurs right here and then you aspirate both of these to make sure it works just fine okay so now we can see it. so now what we're doing is we're aspirating these the, the, the uh, ports should aspirate real easily and freely that's just regular hypernized saline flush this is not uh, what we pack it with at the end of the case that comes should come up from pharmacy it's a certain it's a high concentration heparin it's um a, a, that is given in a volume specific for each of these ports all right so that's kind of what it looks like uh we'll, you know, we'll go one over i don't think this is we're going to show you in a little bit more detail here um sewing these these catheters in two through the wings and usually we put run one racing around the shaft and then I put a dressing on top of this and then don't forget to pack each of the lumens um, with high concentration heparin you can see the the hubs have been applied to this already so that's in place close up the counter incision usually glue it with some dermabond and looking pretty good clean it up that's the dermabond going on and there you go put an occlusive dressing on it before we send them back to the floor thank you